I'm going to show you how to unlock your GPT from just depending on one set of instructions to let you execute much longer prompts with more accuracy. The only tool I'm going to use is Replit, which is an inexpensive online editor that lets you create pseudo APIs pretty quickly. I'm going to give you all my code, OpenAI schema, so you can get this set up and running in under 10 minutes. All right, so I'm going to hop into my GPT that I made called For Turbo Calling, and I'm just going to show you how it works really quick, and then we'll dive into the back end to see how it works. So if we click on supercharge my GPT experience, it's gonna ask me for a specific topic that I'd like to do or ask about. Let's say I want to create a Shakespeare poem about artificial general intelligence. Clearly I can't type. So that should prompt a response for my custom action in my GPT, and there it is. When I click confirm, it should take around 20 to 30 seconds, and it's actually sending a request from my custom GPT to a Replit instance that has its own prompt behind the scenes that's able to kind of bifurcate our experience. So we are just pulling from the response from that prompt. So you'll see here, it works perfectly. And this response is not actually from this custom GPT, and it's not reliant on its instructions, which sometimes, at least for now, can be flimsy it's actually pulling directly from this API. This is a very basic example, but you can imagine if you had around four to five pages worth of instructions, that you don't wanna embed in your custom instructions, and you wanna keep the custom instructions of your custom GPT as lean as possible, you can outsource all of that prompting and all that context window you can take advantage of and not be restricted to 7,000 characters. So you can see how this unlocks things pretty quickly. So if we open this up and show the plumbing and go down here and then I'm just going to move myself there. If we click on the custom action, you're going to see that it's called content generator. And I created this as I do pretty much everything on Replit. Uh, the reason why is one, it's pretty cheap. It's basically like having a mini portable AWS environment, but it's easier to set up and cost wise it's pretty friendly. And it basically allows you to create a pseudo API fairly easily, especially for custom GPT purposes. If you click on or select what's called a reserved VM, a reserved virtual machine, it helps make sure that your Replit is constantly on. So you don't run into an issue where sometimes it works and sometimes it's disconnected. So in this case, we have one main path here called generate content that basically sends whatever query or topic we send from our GPT and it sends it as an input to our prompt. And we're gonna hop into Replit to see what this looks like. Uh, if everything goes well, you get a 200 response and it says content generated successfully. And as the user of GPT, all you see is the payload that you get back. So nothing else beyond that. And I'm gonna include all the uh, Replit code and anything else you need like the schema in my description as well. So you can just look out for that there if you wanna replicate this. If we jump into the Replit, Pretty much all you have to do when you set it up for the first time is when you go to home, you wanna go and create a new replit. Uh, I choose Python, and then you can call it whatever you want, and then you click create. Once you create it, if we jump in here, if we hop into the shell here, so if we just uh, stop this for a second, and then we go into the shell, all you have to do when you start out is click on and is write pip install open AI. And in this case, OpenAI has released recently a, a new API or a new version of that API. So I just suggest if you're watching this right now, just do this upgrade. And then when you click enter, it should satisfy the requirement if it's already there. Otherwise, it will install it and make sure you have the right version. Right now, the latest version is 1.2.3.6. So just a small little pointer there. Other than that, you should be good to go to actually just use this code as is. Um, in terms of the key, naturally, uh, you wanna go to secrets here. And then this is where I've put my API key here, opening it underscore key. I'm not gonna show that here, obviously, but that's all you have to do to really just get it going. Other than that, we have one main route or path that you're gonna use, and that's why it's a, a post method, just because you're actually sending the request for the topic. It's posting it to actually inject it into our underlying prompt and then receives a response. 
So in terms of what you should configure, in terms of the prompt itself, if you go to full prompt right here, you'll see mine is just, I want you to execute the following, and then it's taking a variable called content topic. And where that's coming from is right here. And then where we're getting the topic is obviously from the post request that you're making from custom GPT. Now this looks again, super basic. So where I wanna take it is, imagine you have a much more bespoke prompt. So let's say we took this prompt and we pasted this, right? So now we have a much more nuanced prompt. This is more about building like a Shakespeare type of uh, story, dialogue, novel. It's much more detailed. So if I was to click run and just make sure it's all flowing properly, that looks good. And if I redeploy this, then the next time I start this experience, then it should allow me to just embed my topic and that's gonna be super targeted. I'm gonna just write the topic, it's gonna inject it in this prompt and now it executes a much more bespoke prompt. And where you go from here is imagine you had four, five, six chain prompts, maybe some using 3.5 turbo, some using four, and they're all feeding into each other and then you just get the final result in ChatGPT. So you're kind of streamlining the whole process by taking care of all the plumbing behind the scenes. So it can be very powerful, especially if you start even layering on things like building your own knowledge base or vector database behind the scenes that your prompts reference before you even get a response. Now you've built basically a whole RAG application that you can tap into in ChatGPT if you like the interface, and then you can build on those responses by saying, let's make it a bit shorter, let's make it bulleted, or whatever your use case is. So this is just gonna finish redeploying, and once it is, um, we'll get a little notification here on deployments that it's done. And once that's done, we're just going to refresh our chat GPT, create a new session. And this time I'm just going to write a small topic. All right. So it's all finished now. And again, our main domain here is prompt engine GPT-4 turbo replit.app. And if you're curious how you'd use it, let's say not just in a custom GPT, but in general for any app that takes a API request, we go to postman here. And I go to workspace, let's go here. And I create a new tab. I can say, give me a post request and let me just paste in the name of the app that I've named. And actually, if you have never deployed before, if you deploy for the first time, that's where it's gonna ask you to create a name for your deployment. And then in this case, you just have to call the path. So in every, Replit you write, you're gonna have a path like this. Generate content is our path. And then you just attach it here. So now you're actually calling not only the microservice, but you're calling the method. You can actually generate the content. And if you go to body, you can check what we're taking in as a input. We're taking in topic as an input. So we just go to body and click on raw and make sure it's on JSON. And then I'll just write here. Let's say topic, we have to put it in quotes and then colon and then write what you'd like to write about. So let's say world peace, just as an example. And if you send that request, it's basically again, like a pseudo API. So if you send it through this method, it should be generating that whole response based on that underlying prompt that we just saw. So if we just wait here, we should get a response here. And if we do, that means we should be in the clear and it should work in our custom GPT. There we go. So we got the whole response here. So this tells me that we're gonna get something much more bespoke than we did the first time. So let's go back here and let's go to supercharge my experience. And I'm just gonna put the same thing here as soon as it prompts. World peace. It should prompt me. There it is. And now it's going to send that same request, but now with our altered prompt. Again, it's going to take a bit of time just because it's GPT-4 Turbo, so it's a bit slower, but you have that huge context window to benefit from of around 128K, at least as of this recording. So you'll see it's working perfectly. And yeah, let me just make sure it incorporated our fact of world peace here somehow. All right, the world peace. All right, it's very meta, but it does refer to world peace, at least in its essence. 
Uh, now, I didn't actually really look at what I wrote in terms of that prompt. I literally asked GPT, can you create a multi-thread variable with a huge prompt involving Shakespeare? So I didn't really audit what was really there. If you go back here, again, if you're curious how I made this so it's multi-line, all you have to do is add these three apostrophes, one, two, three, and that lets you go multi-line as long as you finish it here. Then you're not restrained to doing like things like uh, apostrophe or double quotes, a sentence, comma, apostrophe, double quote, sentence, comma, until the end. You can just write whatever you want, which I like because I'm lazy. So I like the idea of just going in between these two brackets and just pasting whatever I want in terms of text. Then I'm covered in terms of bases. I can keep this nice and nimble. For purposes of your use of the code, I'll keep it like this when I actually provide you the code. So it's vanilla form. But yeah, that's how you use GPT-4 Turbo. And if you want to change this to whatever model you want, just change it here, redeploy. And you can imagine where you can take this even more with other LLMs. In another video, in my next video, I'm going to show you how to use Anthropics models, which I've really been preferring for building content or writing human-like type of content. So refer to that video here, and we're going to go through how to do that in a very similar way. If you like content like this, please subscribe below. I'm going to keep pumping out all these different experiments I have using Replit to create microservices that otherwise are hard to do within custom GPTs or any other apps to begin with. So uh, please give a like and subscribe, and yeah, stay tuned for more.